Thank you. I'm extremely honored to be here, present my research in front of this bright and passionate audience. I'm really excited. And I also, when I was growing up, I had a passion. It was music. I played the Russian national instrument. It's called Dombra. It has three strings. You can think of it as Russian banjo. So here's me playing with the orchestra. I wasn't bad at it, uh, but I also had another passion, science. So for a long time, science and music lived harmonically in my life until the point when I had to decide what to do next. And I had this long conversation with my parents. Um, we all went through this lecture, and eventually I decided to do science. But today I'm extremely happy that I have chosen that path because my passion to music helps me to do science. And I'm doing it in the most amazing and most musical of all scientific tools I was able to find, MRI. And I ho hope I'll explain you why MRI is so musical during my talk. So why MRI? First of all, it's amazing. You can look inside a body without touching it, without cutting it. You can study function of organs. But at the same time, MRI is a very fruitful field to do research. It's very loud, it's claustrophobic, it uses very high magnetic fields. So it's really, it's really nice to field and very fruitful field to do research. And in my presentation, I'll try to explain how the knowledge of music and how analogies can help you to improve MRI and make it more affordable. Yeah, by the way, this is my brain here. <laughs> so first of all, in order to understand how can we improve MRI, we need to understand how it works. So first, MRI actually can see water. Yeah, we are 60% water, and each water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms. We know that. But what's more exciting is that each of these hydrogen atoms has a property called spin. So nuclei of hydrogens have a property called spin. You can think of spins as tiny little magnets, little compass needles, which you can manipulate with magnetic fields. So I like to think about spins as spies, because they report about the surrounding without actually affecting it. So how can you do MRI with spins of water? So first, you need to have a really high magnetic field, and I'll explain why later. Second, you need to use radio frequency pulses, which will flip the spins, and that will generate a signal which you can pick up, and we usually use coils. Um, many, this is a pulse sequence of events. So in MRI, we use these diagrams to explain um, exact timing of switching on and off the magnetic fields in order to generate an image. One day, I, would, I was late at work, I was sitting looking at this diagram, and I actually realized that I never left the music. Because what I looked at was a music score. And I imagined and I pictured myself as a director of the big orchestra, where the, the instruments are millions and billions of nuclear spins. Indeed, just think about it, there are so many different types of um, members of orchestra, violins, cellos, timpani, flutes, and the same way, there are so many types of nuclear spins. There are hydrogens, protons, phosphorus, sodium. All of these nuclei possess a pro property called spin, and they can be used to generate MRI signal. So now we are ready to understand why we need magnetic fields to generate MRI image. So imagine that you don't have magnetic fields. All your spins point in different directions. So now if you start collecting the image, you'll see something like this. Do you hear it? There is some signal, but there is a lot of noise because all spins point in different directions, right? It would be much better if we were able to align all the spins in the same direction. In that case, it probably would generate much higher signal. Let's listen. Much better, right? Remarkably, the same number of nuclear spins, the same concentration, can produce signal which is thousands of times higher than it was possible before that. So, to summarize, in order to get a right image, you need to have, as we call it, polarization. If it's low, there is a lot of noise and signal quality is bad. If you have complete alignment of nuclear spins, or as we call it, hyperpolarization, you can generate really strong signal without noise. So, it turns out that at this stage of time, with the magnetic fields that we use, we can generate polarization closer to the left. 
rather than to the right. So actually, we reach the limits where physics can help. And you know, when physicists don't know what to do next, they ask chemists if they can help. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a chemist, and yeah, please. <laughs> So please meet hydrogen molecule. So indeed, hydrogen molecule is the smallest really molecule that can, you can imagine. And it really obeys the rules of quantum mechanics. And these rules are really bizarre. Remember, Schrodinger and Kett can be either dead or alive. So pretty much the same way, hydrogen can exist in only two forms. Orthohydrogen at a state with nuclear spins pointing in the same direction. And parahydrogen, which is a state with nuclear spins pointing in, in opposite directions. So it turns out that it's very easy to enrich hydrogen with parahydrogen by simply cooling the hydrogen gas. And you can think of this state as a cold state. It's spin-ordered spin state, which you can use later to generate complete alignment of nuclear spins. So as chemists, what we do, we do hydrogenation reactions. So we use parahydrogen in reactions, and then radiofrequency pulses to align spins in the same direction. And we produce so-called hyperpolarized molecules. So it's really remarkable because you can use these molecules in many, many different applications. And one of the applications is obvious. So you can produce these hyperpolarized molecules, inject in the patient, and study the dynamics and structure of organs. But not only you can see where these molecules are going in your body, you can actually see chemical changes associated with this. And this is called hyperpolarized metabolic imaging. And it, tells, it can tell you unique information about chemicals and chemical modifications happening right inside you in vivo in real time, non-invasively. So it's a really remarkable field of research. But the current technology already exists. It doesn't use chemistry. It uses high magnetic fields. It's a bulky and a very expensive device. It costs $3 million. And you cannot put it in the same room with MRI machine because it's very bulky and it uses uh, superconducting magnets. So what we can do in the lab, we use chemistry and we can make and build portable polarizers that can produce the same quality, the same agents by chemistry. So we don't need magnetic fields at all. We can bring this, by the way, we call it hypercart. We can bring it to the, to the room with MRI machine, produce an agent and inject it in a patient. And these are my students, undergraduate students, they're helping me to do this. And so for me, Building this instrument, it's like uh, building this machine, it's like uh, building a musical instrument. Yes, it doesn't look like a Steinway yet, but we are working on it. But what excites me about this technology, these ideas, is that once you produce these chemicals, it has complete alignment, 100% polarization. You don't really need magnetic fields anymore to detect it. So, and now we can come back and ask physicists if they can help, right? So it turns out uh, how lucky I'm a physical chemist, so we can do things ourselves. That's what we do in the lab. We go further, we actually do MRI and try to do it without magnetic fields at all, at zero magnetic field. And it's really remarkable because it can open up potential applications which we haven't even thought of. Imagine scanners with open geometry where you can be free to move and stand, no loud sounds, no claustrophobia. MRI can become more affordable in living countries. So this is really excited, exciting and this is my passion. And I think it's very important to find your passion because uh, person without a passion. It's like an orchestra without a conductor. Yes, you can still have your spins. They're just no longer polarized. Thank you. <laughs>